Welcome to the Wooden Work Podcast. We are your hosts, Josh from Josh Taylor Woodworking, Paul from JCR Builds, as usual, and today we have a special guest, Regan from the Good Rule, all the way over in New Zealand. How are you doing? Good. Good afternoon. Good. To you Regan. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah. Um, as Josh said, you're obviously over in New Zealand. Could you please tell everyone what it is you yep. do, who you are, and just a bit about yourself, please? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, my, my name's Regan. Um, I am a chippy or a builder um, uh, down in New Zealand, um, and I am the founder or inventor of The Good Rule, which you'll be seeing out and about. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, where do you want to where do you want to start? You might. How, to how did you start building rulers? <laughs> how did you get into that? It's a very yeah. a niche. <laughs> I know. I know. My mates ask me the same thing. Like they're just like, how the fuck did you want to just change a ruler? And I'm like, I don't. Know. I know. I know myself. Like, um, like my brain just doesn't stop. Like uh, ever since I've been little, I'm just constantly like, why is this like this? Why is this like that? Uh, you know, just I just can't turn it off, and um, and so like I'm I'm the son of a builder. Like uh, um, there's guys out there. It's almost like generational. You just sort of have gr- it's it's sort of almost instinctual. You know, it's buildings in your blood. And like my father's, he's actually an old shipwright from the um, trained in the by the British Navy from New Zealand. He was sent over to Britain, and um, and a shipwright is a guy who was trained to pretty much look after the boat like a, a you know a frigate um at sea and so they're trained to do carpentry welding tinsmithing just absolutely anything and so um so i don't know in my, and, and then he's he's um when he when he left he uh he became a, a master builder because obviously you know his he, his natural transition once he left the navy was to become a builder and then that led on to him um, where we grew up was in a small town central New Zealand and um, and so you did everything you drew you drew your own plans and then you went and built the houses um, oh really wow the clients. <laughs> and, and, and you do you do everything from the ground up in New Zealand it's quite common as a as a chippy it's not like you've got first fixes or second fixes or framers or roof framers you do the whole like you're trained to do the whole the whole thing from foundations all the yeah, way. Yeah, I think through. that's good. Um, but, but even like before my time, you know, like my you'd actually draw the plans themselves. So you'd draw the plans, do the whole thing, and then uh, and then my dad went on to become the. <clears throat> there was sort of no one in the in the small town who was as qualified as my dad. Um, so they just appointed him the or asked him if he could be the local. Uh, building inspector for the 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 borough council at the time um and so th- he went into went into that role and so i grew up with like a um, draftsman's board at home that i'd learn how to um like i just play on his drawing tables and and i'd have all the big sliding architectural um squares that did all the scales and and all your degrees and and i'd see his plans that were half finished and 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 like even out in the where we lived would fix up motorbikes and would take two old bikes and stick them together and you could assemble one bike you know and and then you'd have your bike that you'd hoon around with so all out me and all my mates would all have piece of shit bikes that were sort of made up out of all sorts of things you know like you name it we we blew it up we tried to blow it up we'd like we'd yeah just, it was a real, <laughs> It was like a real free makers type life growing up um, with that sort of influence. And so, um, you know, obviously as you get older and, and you, you go out into the world, like I naturally tended towards the trade. Um, so like I could get a job. Um, I, I was actually real obsessed at being a snowboard bum down in the South Island in, in Wanaka. And, uh, and as a summer job in between seasons, I could always pick up uh, work on, on a job site being uh, you know as a roofer um and and then i'm kind of 
went from roofer into being the guy that was really good just to leave him doing all the flashings. And so I'd do all the chimney flashings and the roof flashings. and <clears throat> Blood work. Um, because that you needed a, you needed a bit more attention to detail. Um, and, and so I sort of built up my experience um, in that with the, sort of all the learning that I had. Like it was all quite, quite natural, um, obviously, um, without... Um, uh, yeah, and then and then obviously I sort of did a did a job for a carpenter on as a cashy on the weekend, and he's like, "Man, can you come back on Monday and just work for me as a as a hammer hand slash builder?" <laughs> and uh, and I was at the time I was like, "Oh, sure, that sounds like better pay and means I could go snowboarding and um you know fund my snowboarding addiction um longer." <laughs> And so yeah, so like the Monday, I'm I'm wearing a carpenter's tool belt, and I think the first day I pulled um, I was doing framing, and I and I pulled out my, the ruler that I had, and and so I start framing, and I'm looking at the framing, and I'm like, oh, the framing's 45 wide, and and this is years ago, and I was like, wonder why this ruler's this wide, and and I was like, it's so random, and so like I had this thought years ago, but it's a thing that I do, like I'm, I'm constantly just sort of like having a question or form an idea and then I kind of I almost want to know more but I always seem to remember it or log it away in my brain somewhere and then years later I was like ah like this is this is like 15 18 20 maybe 18 years later you know after that first initial idea I'm driving to work um you know like I've I've moved up north and and living out on the coast in the far north island and and I'm driving to work, and here I am again. I'm like, why are our rulers one meter long? And because I was like, the building actually, all our building is based on imperial measuring. Um, so like a sheet of plywood is is 1.2 meters by 2.4, which is four foot by eight foot sheet. And I was like, oh, that's real interesting. And then I was like, oh, yeah. 4.8 meters, 5.4, like all those common measurements that that buildings are built out of in raw material which are done in the mills are all are all um, have imperial um uh sort of their uh what's the word um it all it all stems from that so so like the a stud height in a house or um is is an eight foot stud but it's called to, you know you get a sheet of drywall or jib board it's 2.4 meters. And so I was like, man, the one meter as a unit is actually a completely oddball size. Um, <laughs> it's like, this shit happens in my head all day. It's like, yeah. And then so I was like, man, the 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 ruler should be like a story rod. It should be a representation of these units. So I was like, if you divided it up a sh an eight foot sheet into equal amounts, you'll you'll end up in you'll end up in feet, which is 300 mils, 600 mils, 900 mils, 1200 mils, 15, 18, um, and so forth. And 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 then I and then so then you're like, well, what would a rule be? Should it be a 1200 rule or 600 rule? And then I was like, 600 would kind of work. And then so this is like the, this is that was like the thought process. And then so ever since then, like once I sort of get my head a head into something I kind of like that really started bugging me because now I'm back at work and I'm like my rule is completely fundamentally wrong <laughs> and so, well, that, 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 there was no thought process when they made it uh, they, they yeah. just pushed the ruler out that's what they've done well <laughs> no nah, so what happened is we we're building so it happened and as far as I could sort of figure things out um so the metric system came along so the UK you know being a British colony, New Zealand and Australia, we we got all our all the building comes from the UK and the UK was imperial pre metric system. So all the buildings which have been around forever were all built in imperial. And then the metric system came along and so they the the metric unit is the is the unit of that we were gifted as as our measuring tool um and, and so um at that at that point um that that kind of got lost and i was like man no one had ever maybe put two and two together 
because these designers aren't carpenters on the ground who are, who are actually doing the work. And I was like, man, this mm, like, it's been lost in translation. And so that's, so, yeah. And so then I was like, man, that's, you can see like now it sort of really starts to bug you. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make my own ruler. Cause so I started like making, I made one out of like, I just dummied up the, the dimensions out of custom or just to see what it visually would look like. Cause I'm quite a visual person. And, and, um, so I made one, I was like, yeah, I reckon I could make this work. And then, but while I'm at work, I'm doing suffetes and fascia and, and I sort of started putting two and two together. I'm like, man, one, six inches, 150, 300 centers, the foot. I'm like, man, everywhere I started looking, I was seeing imperial, imperial dimensions jumping out at me. And so the ruler, um, which is like, I've got one here is, you know, that's like six inches. Because well, obviously, as you, obviously as you fold it out, really? it's not sort of six it's, inches all folded up. So obviously, you have to remember a lot of people are just listening; they're not actually, yeah, watching us. That's one thing that always gets us when, yeah. <laughs> so it starts off, oh, right, it's a yeah. double, So it looked like a double piece yeah, of yeah. ruler that's folded up. So it starts. Yeah, it's called on. a fourfold. Yeah, it's it's a, so what it is. It's a fourfold ruler which has been around forever, and um. But I've actually just changed the dimensions to just to suit the actual units that we that we build in, or the or how it all came about. It's it's almost like a little mini pocket story rod for all your raw material that you can use in. So like that mm. six inches is like a one fifty weatherboard, or three hundred centers. Like we screw our drywall off at equal spacing, so eight equal spacings of a of drywall of an eight foot sheet you'll get one foot which is 300 mils which is this ruler folded out mm. the halfway and then now you're at 600 which is half the width of a piece of plywood across ways you know like so you... 1.2 meter sheet this is going to be really yeah. confusing well, it, for your well, listeners well it's eh? sort of, <laughs> no, no, it sort of is but a lot of the idea is so you've actually made it to next like... episode <laughs> no is that is, we've only got carpenters that listen to it anyway mate <laughs> Right. They can follow along. <laughs> All right. So forty. So then. So then the width is forty-five wide, and then so if you drop one leg down, now we're into twenty-two and a half mils, which is, which is like really common for like centre of deck joists or centre of stud or twenty-two and a half. Yeah, yeah centre. Yeah, there's a forty-five and stud. So, yeah, makes sense. So you haven't had to do any actual measuring without. I haven't even pulled a pencil out. Like. You can just be like center of stud, and you can just pull the roller. So you made it as a see, so it's almost like a story know, stick. Yeah. You made the rule like a story stick, haven't you? Of, of yeah, completely, that's amazing. Yeah. Like it's a, yeah, and so I've I've actually gone on and built a um, version for the US is like well, the US and Canada are almost like a truer form of the imperial. They they actually haven't changed, but their stud width that is a common size is. Um, an inch and a half in width, which is which is dressed two inches. So we're we're um oh sorry, dressed inch and three quarters is what they so the mill. So it all goes it all actually goes back to the mills back in yeah. the day when when you rough went saw. to an old sawmill. That's the old rough saw. And, and that's what so it's, it's like um, when you buy a four b two rough yeah, saw. Yeah, so that's how it all. It's four b two, but then if you get that, you but if you actually buy it as a p, it's as a plate or finished size. Yeah. As you say, it's like three and three quarters by yeah. one and three quarters, yeah. or because you're taking that face off the rough saw face off that original size of timber. Yeah. But the only thing is, again, you go back to the you said about the UK. The confusing part is, as you say, <clears throat> but thing is, we're not actually metric here in the UK yet, because even though you say we are, we are not, because we still buy doors, thirty inch doors. We buy into yeah, here your doors. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like. An eight before sheet, yeah. But we, but we well, buy plywood. No, so it's not, do we. It's not twenty four hundred by twelve hundred. Plywood's twenty four forty by twelve twenty. It's still eight eight before. <laughs> they sell it as they sell it as, as metric. Yeah, but they but, don't. It's imperial. <laughs> and what wants to convert it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so that so that's funny you say that because we do get sheets from um, different parts of the world. So we'll get sheets that are. 1.2 by 2.4 but then we do get sheets that are 12 20 by 2440 and, and and that is a true imperial sheet 
but but what I've found with um, because of the rule, I've started to really go even deep further into all the building culture and uh, all around the world, obviously because we're in the digital era now. And so you're getting this exposure to all these like uh, niche. It's just fascinating. Like it's like, um, like I have conversations with good guys in Oregon and the States about the finer points of framing um, with a, with a mate of mine, like these, people become start becoming you know mates from all around the world like me even talking to you guys you know like we'll probably start firing conversations yeah oh no it, it's social, been uh, it's a massive sort of um, you know, thing about i like the idea of the networking uh, it's sort awesome. of the um story yeah. stick idea i like that i mean i don't do a lot i don't go on um building sites anymore i don't do like proper you know um commercial sites i just do private and small like if it's a small developer, I'll go to do first fix and all that for them. I don't work on the commercial side. Um, but do you have a version of the? Because I've not. I actually only found out about your ruler last week. To be on, oh, two weeks ago when it was mentioned about you potentially um, coming on to join us. So does it actually have? So obviously, you know when we do going back to your architectural drawings because you said that's where almost your, you know, everything stemmed from seeing your your father's architectural drawings does the ruler have the building scale on it for using off architectural drawings as well ah good question so my initial design i was like well if i get to so then i started going well i get to design a rule so i'm like got this blank slate and so i was like what am i after it and that that was actually at the time i was running quite a big job um out on the coast and i was using um paper plans like we've we've always used paper plans um and i had those initial designs so i started researching all the main scale features that architects use like there's actually almost more well, than normally we use those tri- quite often we use those triangular um, rules don't we features, a, if we're using the paper drawings which we still use paper um i think that's why a lot of us join as carpenters still like paper magazines and paper books because everything goes back to paper rather than technology for us but as you said they actually have like so each side of the ruler because it's three pointed has two scales on it so that's six scales per ruler but only that's only that's only a fraction of the scales that you use isn't it yeah and and so what i found is that different architects or draftsmen's will prefer to use a different variety of scales they might be like like to be in 125ths or 15ths or the cabinetry guys like it in 15ths because it's bigger and so I found that there was a lot more of that but at the time because I was on site like that was the natural train of thought is to do that um my boss handed me an iPad and he's just like here you go here's your plans on this and I was like but I had the whole range nah but what I did is I had the whole range of all the plans, all the details, all the specs. And it was a really intensive job where I actually had to keep going back to the architect and be like, what are you doing in this detail? And I could grab the Apple pen, circle the detail, fire it off to them via email, like super quick, and then get a reply back within like 30 minutes and then be showing it to the boys and be like, this is the detail that we're going to do. And then I'd be like, oh, I'm missing some scales on this plan. And all I was doing was I was taking my ruler that I had not yet built yet, just the standard building rule, and I'd sit it on the plans. And then I'd pinch zoom the plans in and out and right, scale yeah. the plans to the ruler. And so then, so then I was like, well, I've actually just made my design redundant on the scale rule. So I was like, if I've actually... Yeah. That's good. Did, yeah. Do you understand that? It's like actually I've a good looked, idea using the digital like having screen. Having a digital but screen. It's because it, I've it's actually, not something I think of doing, to be honest, because I, yeah, I, was, I have a bit of paper in the ruler. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so everything's all digital now, and you can get it. You, it all comes emailed, and you actually need to create almost like a digital trail. Um, like the councils now are all paperless here for building inspections. Everything's all digital. They do. A, they walk in, they do a inspection on their tablet. And then it gets, they hit send and it gets emailed to the client immediately, gets emailed to you and it gets emailed to the council. So everything's all transparent. And so just by, you know, having just tablets on site now, I'm, I was like, wow, this is the future. Um, my idea of putting scales on the rule 
I've just made it redundant just by using a tablet. So yeah, I could. And, and then so you look at how many guys are actually going to be taking this up, but then there's going to be guys that are still always going to be using the scale rule um, in another 40 years, they're going to pull it out and then you're never going to change yeah. them. But we're going, to be the, really, we're going to be the minority using zero inch So I, I will and be so, one of those people still uh, using scale rules and a bit of paper. Uh, no, you won't. You're oh, going to be getting your screen down. I get, I get what you mean because... <laughs> I, I, no, I get the idea oh, what no you're saying. You, yeah, I never thought about that. But as you say, certainly the younger generation of people coming through would be more and more technology based than what we would be. So of course, it makes no, it makes no sense to make it yeah. to that, that mark. There's but no then, point making but, rules to say people like myself who are the paper and ruler because we are we are a minority, and you're just niching it down too much, aren't you? Well. The thing was, is I was actually making the rule for myself. So I never like had this external idea of like, I need to make it so that I'm making everyone else happy. I was actually totally just going, huh, new project. I'm making myself a ruler. This is so awesome. Um, I get to put anything I like on it. And so I like, because I've always been a, a maker or a tinkerer, I've always sort of had an idea, gone out and done it and then gone, you know, if there was, if something didn't work or I, I always sort of learn, you always learn from your, learn from your mistakes and things you do next time and um and if some if you've built something that uh, another person has to use you know like how easy is it for them to use it without any instruction is it intuitive you know like there's all these things that you that or i do anyway like i kind of take notice of the the whole um the whole process if if, if, if that makes sense you know it's not just so, so you're not it's almost like you've got to be your own critic and and so you've got your uh uh you've got your idea but then at the same time you've got your idea you've almost got to like be well you can't see your own faults either your can you? when, you, when you're making something for yourself but, and um, as you say if you're making it for yourself and only you are using it yeah you make it any way you want because you know how to use it and you can't see your own faults it's the same as like proofreading an article isn't yep. it if you write something or when I'm editing, say, when I'm yep. editing, I'll do a first edit, yep. I'll leave it a day, I go back and do another edit. Because you, cause you're watching or reading the same thing over and over again, you can't see the fault. When you look at it with a fresh pair, pair, pair of yeah. eyes, you see the fault. Yeah. Don't you? So you've always got to... I mean, that's why we prototype things, yeah. isn't it? It's about yeah. people to try things, because if you, if you did a ruler, I mean... They say you can't invent the wheel, so we'll look out mm. for a new wheel coming from you soon. Um, but yeah, but just because <laughs> if you send one out and they like, what the hell is this? What do I do with this? It's not doing its job, is it? And it, it's pointless. Nah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you're. I've got a good <laughs> question for you, Regan. Oh, no. Is is the good rule? Is it finished? Are you have you finished engineering no. it? And, uh, uh, yeah. Or do you think? Oh, I could slightly improve that. Do you? Do you think? Yeah, you well, could... uh, yeah, hundred percent. Like, uh, like <laughs> I'm always, I'm always, like, like I've got new changes. Like that, that rule you're, uh, that that's done now is the fifth update or sixth update that I've done, and then I've just got more coming. Like I'm doing some. Uh, I've just fired some stuff off through to just get like I'm talking minor changes like, um, but it just doesn't stop like um, yeah. But 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 I think the next slot's going to be pretty much the last. Um, and with in terms of like functions like storage debt building functions, uh, so half or the twenty two and a half is half of a stud, so we call that one function, right? The uh, six hundred is half of a one point two sheet. How many functions do you think you've put into it where man, it can do? I, man, honestly, like I get sent stuff, like I get tagged quite a lot in, and it actually comes down to the creativity of the end user. Like I've seen, like I just say, if you go through, say, my Instagram account, I just if I get tagged in on, a, say, a story, I just save it to the year that it was made in so just as a and then you go through it and you'll just see uses that guys are coming up with for it like oh really i didn't 
just like use the, using it creatively as a packer somewhere, or they're using it for the gaps on their head flashings where the, where the um, weatherboard meets the head flashings. Like it's just because that's five mils. Um, it's just got all these uses. Like, it's not the, actually you know um, things it's yeah. not actually designed for, but you can make yeah. anything. <laughs> like, like, like to give you a quick answer, it's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know, maybe ten uses. If just just off the top of my head, like how I would use it. Um, like it's got a built-in angle finder. It's got um, a oh, has it? feature in there. Yeah, wow. to sort of That's use amazing. it like a bevel. Yeah, um, yeah. But but like I've I've got this one here that I'm showing you. If you can, that's actually a full um, oh, cool. so aluminium the one. General one that's out. Oh, nice. And that's like, but but this one's this one's like the last prototype. This is like prototype number four of of a. So um, what is the what is it normally made out of? The actual product that you sell for the general market. Um, ABS. So so ABS plastic, which is the same plastic as Lego, um, and it's got brass fitting. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to replicate those old school quality tools, like my dad's tools from when he was a shipwright, are like beautiful hardwood with brass and like just beautiful inlays. Like it's just really wicked old UK tools. And, and that's what I wanted to replicate, but because um, uh, that's what I grew up with. And, and, the, and the, the tools that we get in stores – like in your general shit. stores, they're generally just like shit. They're just <laughs> I was thinking that. Then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're just like, like you pick up a bevel, go into like a main hardware store and buy a bevel, and then compare it to your granddad's bevel and your granddad's bevel. I can guarantee it's actually it's, it's actually my great granddad's bevel. Yeah. Along yeah. with his and so, great, my great granddad's. Coping saw as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great granddad's Amazing. coping saw and bevel, and they piss all over this stuff. I'm not, maybe yeah. not, no, maybe not. So if you get into like the realms of stirrette yeah. or what you like can that, buy, the, you know. But I'm talking about your general backhoes or you know the, the, the ones you get from the Home Depots or B and Qs or those sort of stores. Uh, as you say, they're just Chinese shy, isn't it? So is it injected molded the ABS? You have it all injected. And so you got to, you, yeah, yeah. So the idea was, my, my idea was like, what would you make the perfect ruler out of? And I was like, it'll be, it'll be, it's got to be steel. Cause I, cause I like try to just stay away from plastic just from an environmental point of view. But by making it out of that is, is the price point's too high. Um, and so it's got to be accessible as well. Like I was like, man, this thing needs to be yeah. accessible to an apprentice. Like, you know what I mean? Like apprentices need to have access to good tools as well. And so that was one of the main reasons that I went down that road is I didn't want to make something that was just exclusive to, to someone who's like just into fine tools. It's also a very like, small market. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Like a lot of money um, on a ruler or a bevel or it, with a very small percentage. But yeah, yeah. Um, but I kind of... <sighs> Like, I sort of had that in mind, but then at the same point, like, without contradicting myself, I was building it for myself. And so what I did, to, if we were to jump back a bit, I was like, this would be um, quite a cool project to, if it worked, I was like, if it worked, it'll be quite cool to see it uh, mm. pan out or just to, just to follow its progression of, of it, like the, the, the fails and the wins of the project. And so I started documenting it on my instagram account and then it was almost at the same time where i sort of discovered that there was this massive community forming of like-minded individuals of of tradesmen and carpenters in new zealand and then i was in and australia and then the uk and then it just sort of started as people started getting interest in it and like oh that's a cool idea um but at the same time i i was um I couldn't release too much information just because of uh, IP protection reasons that were still, because it started actually costing me quite a bit of money. Um, so just to be smart about it, I was like, uh, the industrial designers I was working with were like, oh, we've got 
guys who we work with for IP protection and you might want to talk to them. And then I was like, okay, fine. You know, you're just sort of doing what the um, experts tell you. And then I was like, well, it's actually kind of cheap, cheap to get a file, at least file the design and say that, hey, this is something I've created, stamp on a piece of paper. But um, which was a good move in the end. Um, How much did it cost for that process? 10 grand, um, 5 grand? Uh, New Zealand, like you can file. So if you want to start getting down, like I've learned a ton about um, like pretty much if you've got a really good idea, don't tell anybody, don't share it. Um, um, you just got to keep it to yourself. Um, if you share it on any images or if you go, take a picture of it and messenger it to your mate, you've pretty much, you've, it's called public disclosure. So you've publicly disclosed it. And then you're like, hey, I want to take my idea and um, and do design protection, which is not a patent. I mean, God, you're going to patent the rule. Thing, but if, if, you're, <laughs> if you've re- yeah, you can't patent a rule. Like, if you've invented a new fandangle machine that no one's ever even experienced, done invent uh, seen before it's completely new then that's a patent if you've made a wheel that's different and it's going to have all these functions um that's design protection and it, and it doesn't have as much in the way of protection or the duration doesn't last as long there's all Legals. these you start getting into quite technical sort of legal things about different but it's different. It's a, like a different level of protection. So um, IP protection or, oh, sorry, design protection protects the l- actual look of the product. So um, so theoretically, no one can actually copy the actual look of the product. So if it's something unique to, to what you do, um, someone can, so like an industrial designer's job is to try and find the, the way around the roadblock if they were, were to say, make a new hammer that didn't infringe on on someone's hammer they make there's there's ways around it by being clever or being really good in your job in design in industrial design yeah like yeah you can i can we can talk hours about ip and design and how it all goes into it um it's quite it's pretty cool but um yeah trying to protect your product as best as you can is a big world of market effectively is what you're doing into it that, that that's what it that's what it's designed for it's 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 designed for um uh like if you listen to um uh james dyson if you ever get a chance to read his book it's really cool book with some really awesome information on um patent and ip protection and because it's your it's almost like your art and so they put in these the, this protection and it's so you can get to market because there's massive companies out there that will just absolutely stomp on you yeah. and beat you to market with your own idea um, mm. because you're small fry. And it's actually become even worse because of the digital age. Like stuff can, like a new idea can travel almost way quicker than your idea can get to market because you're real constrained being quite small by obviously access to capital and you just mm. you just can't hit so you said you've got the plastic you've got the main plastic rule I don't know ABS but so yeah. you got your main plastic type rule so do you do are you doing the yep. aluminium rule as an actual run yep. for the people that do want the higher end type thing if you know what I mean or is that just a prototype for yourself um i i just i just uh, uh, once the once again, I built it as a prototype to see if I could do it because I, I'm kind of like, well, going back to what you said earlier on, um, Josh, you know, like, is, are you making any more improvements? And so that's like, for me, that's an obvious improvement is increasing the durability of the ruler by, go, by going from plastic to, to metal or to, a, to, a, to an alloy. You know, that, that, that's an improvement on itself. So. I found that as a challenge to do that. So I went down that road, which meant a whole new different design because it's hinged differently because you can't injection mold. You actually have to mill it. And then you're going down into laser printing instead of hot mm. foil printing, um, which is completely different again. And then within laser printing, you're using um, actuators, which have certain amount of movement. And so you're dealing with 
um, tolerances and the mechanism, you know, like it's just, so oh, you can go, yeah. I see, a, I see also that you've done a deal as with as a, Ox. As a learning so tip. people, so people can actually, if you're in sort of like the UK, the ah, States yeah. or wherever, which I believe you've done because of mainly um, international shipping and that sort of thing is extortionate beyond belief, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, well, I, I tried to get a parcel back Especially from the States Zealand, like, from uh, Richard yeah, White recently, Zealand, and it was something like 50 US dollars to get it back to the UK. So he sent it to a internally all the way across America for $7. <clears throat> and then one of my friends who's an air hostess picked it up for me and flew it back. It was cheaper. Um, but it was like something like $50, and it was only wow. one of his wooden spoons. It was tiny. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. So, so you've, you part, just tell us a bit about your partnership yeah. with Ox. So, because yeah. obviously then people can buy it across the, across Europe now and everywhere, really. So, so yeah. So, so really quickly, um, I, 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 I was kind of like, holy shit, this thing's just like taking off. And um, I didn't expect it at that scale. And and then so something like this, I quickly realized like, um, and I, like I, I get quite a lot of uh, messages like guys in Europe or the UK or this, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere that are just like, where, where can I get one? How do I get one? Can you give me a, you know, a better rate on shipping. And I'm like, man, I like subsidize shipping to get it over there. Like the shipping that I charge on the website is, is like, I'm actually paying for a lot of it just to, just to get it over there because I know, I know it's such a nightmare. And so I, I knew that, you know, like I'm on a ticking clock with at some point I'm going to be copied. Um, and so I had this opportunity, Ox contacted me and, and were like, We've been speaking to carpenters in Australia about new products, and and they said you guys need to be making um making the good rule, and so and then they contacted me, and um and I we we came to an agreement um and I've licensed I've licensed the rule for them to manufacture, and so that what that does is that gives um um it it taps into their massive distribution network, which is a global distribution network and the thing is is like out of all the big mainstream tools that you could pick i kind of like ox is an australian company that was formed maybe 60 years ago um originally i think in concrete hand trowels is where it, you know that they they're, they're a hand tools company that's what they they specialize in and so i kind of felt that you know the, the history kind of lies in hand tools even though they're big and and it's out of all the big, big nice players, you. you know, I kind of felt that there was quite a good, um, a good partner to have, or it was a good match. And I kind of feel that that sort of like honor the design or could appreciate the design. And so, um, and, and so now what that does is that, um, it part of the deal was that, um, the, the rules that they distribute, uh, called the ox tough rule. So it fits into their branding and, and, um, because they have the ox tough series, which is a series of, hand tools that they're sort of designating as being um, their premium range or part of their premium range. And, 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 and then that means that, you know, you can get them in the UK. You don't have to pay for shipping or your packages is not, your packages not going to get lost from halfway to from here to New Zealand. Um, yeah. So, so you should be able to walk into a, um, so they've actually just started rolling them out. Um, Ox UK just recently got their sort of first shipment of Ox Tough Rules. And so it's made in the exact same mold um, as the Good Rule um, by my manufacturer. Um, to, so it's the same rule, just different branding, um, different color range that suits They've just, rebra the they've just rebranded um, your product as theirs, all the but obviously with your permission, and, and, but with your permission, um, obviously. Yeah, it's a nice nice way to do 100%, that. 100%, yep. um, Amazing. Congratulations. It's sexual on interest, that. doesn't it, as well for... As you say, oh, someone someone's going to copy it, hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might as well help help one of them do it properly. And um, <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? like, but, yeah, they're going to do it. <laughs> Just don't fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah, totally. Because I kind of like, like I'm 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 not like a greedy person, so I'm kind of like, look, oh. 
like I kind of you know you got to be realistic and so yeah like and, yeah. and I know I know like I I don't do office work that well like I actually loathe it I'd rather have my tool belt on listening to a podcast or an audible book on something just to keep my brain happy and just be building and being busy like that's what I enjoy doing like I can do office work to a point and then I'm just like so over it and then I gotta be I gotta tap out and do something um and and but but uh, I think it's been a great move um and, and what it has done like I've actually got like other tools on the go that I've designed that I can't actually even make a start on um that I've just had sitting there idle for years and so it kind of takes a load off as well um, but I am still keeping the good rule going as a little boutique brand because I enjoy doing it and it's it's almost like my little outlet for creativeness so I can still like I've got a square and one day I'd love to do a hammer that I've got designed yeah what's up next what 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 are you focusing on next now the good rule the most finished and engineered I've I've got a square that I've um designed about the same time as when I designed the rule that that fits between a speed square and a finishing square because as a New Zealand builder we do the speed square that you get is actually if you were to go back and look at it it's it's traditionally a American roof framer square and so over there you get you get a lot of segmented trades um and so you get guys that but but it's such a great tool that it's actually spanned into other trades and so um but but for me being a user and a bit of a um a tool ocd geek i i um i feel it's missing a lot of stuff that i'm missing off like my combination square um for finishing work because i we do finishing work and roof framing and wall framing like we do the whole lot so i I, i've got this i've sort of called it the multi-square um just because it does a lot more things that fit for, for me as a carpenter um and so that's that's quite close i've actually placed my first i've got my first production run getting done right now of of a small batch run um in in metric and in i did a small smaller batch run in imperial just to see what the end product's going to be like and so that's going to be quite exciting i can't what's, release anything at the moment um just because i'm still doing some what's a small batch run things. what what size is that you know 10 20 100 um under 100 oh okay uh, and what and you then, just give them and you I, give them to your friends to use and say what do you think of it is that how you start um, it? oh i'm gonna like i'm giving some to some close mates that i um i know will appreciate it but i definitely will be having um i've got some that are gonna go up straight for sale on on the store um when they when oh they cool up. oh no nice. because i do have um i do have guys that i know that you know i uh you know, you, you, your contact base is, is, or mine is quite large that I can't just send everybody a message who, who might... It'll take a it. week, won't it? It'll take a week, that, won't it? 400 people. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so if you miss out, you miss out. And But I don't care if it... Like, I, I've been... I'm using one in my tool belt right now. It's, it's, it's half um, machined out of stainless plate and half 3D printed, and I've... Um, uh yeah so so it was fully 3d printed and i'd been using that and then i had to stop using it because it was getting really grubby because it was i was like man this is awesome and i started using it and i was like oh, no, i need to put this away and then my manufacturer did a test run of um of the stainless plate so it's got a heel and a plate and then the plate turned up so i've swapped out the plate with uh, in this uh, so, you can carry on using it. so now i'm using my <laughs> Half a half a three D printed half a cool. So cool. now I'm like using it again, so I'm quite happy and I'm loving it. It's it's like <laughs> it's quite cool. cool. Like in your cool. in your tool belt, like having tools you've actually made that are that I've made myself, but uh, but I just get to share them with 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 sort of like yeah. my community. That so I just to finish like, off that, just to finish off, you know that, can you just tell yeah, everyone? Yeah. Amazing. Where they can find you on your social medias and your websites, etc., so everyone knows exactly where they can reach you or get your product from.
Um, so I have a Facebook account, but I never use it. But I have to have it to have Instagram because um, that's just the way it is with my website. But I pretty much just live on Instagram um, at uh, the good dot it or the good. And your, web, your website for actually name. purchasing um, one. Yeah. And it's the, oh, the website is um, is the good rule dot com. So I've kept it nice and simple. Um, even the name, even the name of everything, I just try to. I'm not into like fancy brands or anything. I was just like, what would I call the rule? And I was. Just and of course, like, oh, you say you rule. could also buy the it, you know, it's, it's catchy, catchy. Rule, if they're yeah, in sort so, of Europe and UK. The ox tough rule, yeah. Wherever you find ox um, in stores, you can ask them, um, "Can you get me in a tough rule?" And they will contact um, the local ox. Um, Superb. Have you got any office, final thoughts um, or things sure to say, Josh? Uh, just one quick one. Do you have a price point on the aluminium rule? The good rule, aluminium one. If you do get it out, what where um, will it be priced? That is like that's actually like a um, higher end tool, and it's going to be under two hundred New Zealand dollars. Um, yeah. At, yeah, for sure. But it's definitely not for the apprentices. Um, no. It's going to be. It's almost. It's almost like it's such a nice ruler that it's almost like a gift. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So It'll be I'm interesting sure. to see how that does, you know? Yeah, well, I think it'll take a trashing on. I don't know. It's like a, it's quite nice. Like, it's actually really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be up to the user to decide what they want to do with it. Okay. Like once it's left so, here, it's out of my thank control. Thank you very much for joining us today, <laughs> Regan. Um, yeah. I will leave a link to all the social media pages in the description down below. As normal, we'll be on all major platforms. If you have any questions for any of us, please leave them down below and we shall get back to you as soon as we see them. Um, thank you all for joining us and thank you for watching. Ta-ra. Thank you. Thank you.